Hi guys, it's Katie. Today I did a little food prep. I did some last night and some today. Uh, in this video I am making yogurt, almond milk, some delicious chocolate granola, sourdough flour tortillas, oatmeal waffles, and some plantains. So hopefully you enjoy the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get started. All right, first up, we're going to make almond milk, and I have already soaked my almonds. I'm going to put four cups of water in my pitcher here, and then here I have my soaked almonds. You can see they're kind of murky, so you want to drain those and rinse them really well. All right, so the almonds go in. At this point you can put any other ingredients you want. I usually put dates in for sweetness. You could do maple syrup or just sugar. You could do vanilla. Um, sometimes you can, some people put like a pinch of salt. That's all I do is dates, almonds, water. And then we'll take this over to the blender. I make sure I blend it for at least a full minute, even though I have a Vitamix, which is a high power blender, still, you have to give it time. And actually, I think it's the date <laughs> that the blender needs the most help with, rather than the almonds, since they're soaked. Um, but you want to pulverize it as much as possible to get the most out of the um, nuts. And then what I have here, my straining contraption, is I have one of these eight cup measuring cups. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. They're good for so many things. This is one of my most used like mixing bowl. Um, I use it for everything and it's super duper handy. So I have that and then I have a strainer like this and then inside the strainer, I just use a towel and this is like my straining towel. So it's a little stained, um, but you can use like a flour sack towel or you can get a dedicated nut milk bag but really, this towel works for everything. I use it for bread making as well. I just pour that in and let it strain, and then you squeeze it out, but really, just let it strain with gravity, and it'll do more than half of the work. So you can see it dripping down through there. Um, if you've never made homemade almond milk, especially if you have a Vitamix or a Blendtec high-powered high blender, even if you do drink like cow's milk, you have no problem with cow's milk, you should try almond milk because fresh homemade almond milk is so delicious. So I'm going to put that off to the side and just let that strain. And I'm just going to put this blender like this because we're going to use the blender in a minute and there's no sense in washing it because I'm just going to put almond milk back in there. So I have these um, plantains and I just noticed earlier this evening that this one's already splitting open so I don't want to just leave them on the counter though you know, they'll go bad. And they're already, you know, pretty ripe. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam these. So we'll go back over here to the stove. I'm just gonna give them a quick scrub. And this is usually my husband's speciality. Um, but since I'm working in the kitchen, I told him I would do it tonight. He usually does it in the stovetop steamer. I'm gonna do it in the pressure cooker. Um, one, because I have three, and I don't know that they would fit in my steamer anyway. And two, I would think it'd be cool to try it in the pressure cooker. So he said 20 minutes in the stovetop steamer, like just in a steamer basket. So I think what I will do is maybe like six minutes, and then I can check them. And I think if I use my pressure cooker, I can put these in whole. So he usually cuts them into like two or three inch lengths just so they fit in the steamer basket. I'm just going to cut these little ends off, just so they fit a little better. And just put them in whole. So that's what it looks like. It's on my trivet here in my pressure cooker. And put this on the stove. Seal it up. And let those go. I just want to make some yogurt, so I'll get that going while I have the stove going because I need to watch that pretty closely. So 
I have two quarts of whole milk. I'll put that on this other burner here. All right, so I have my milk here. I'm gonna put it on sort of a medium high. You wanna bring it up to 180 degrees. Um, so it'll start to steam quite a bit, but it should not be boiling. And then once you get that up to 180 degrees, I'll take its temperature with the thermometer, and then I'll bring it back down to 120 and inoculate it. So right now it's pretty cold because it just came out of the refrigerator. All right. The plantains are up to pressure. I just took a minute to wash those few dishes so I can stay on top of things. Turn down the pressure cooker just to maintain pressure. Set a timer for, I think, six minutes. And then by that time, this should start be, to be warming up. All right. I'm also going to go ahead and make an ice bath here in my sink so I can chill down my uh, yogurt once it's up to 180 degrees. So. All right. Turn off the pressure cooker and I'll take it off because there's just a little bit of water. Actually, it shouldn't take too long to come down, so I'm just going to let that natural release. And I think this is right at 180 now, 184, so that's fine. So that was convenient. It worked out, you know, timing-wise, just right. Get both of those done at the same time. Take this over to the ice bath and the sink. Just sit that in there. And to help this cool, you want to move the milk around every once in a while, and you also want to move the water around the pot. I didn't have quite as much ice as I wish I did, but this should come down in just a few minutes. and see which happens first, whether this comes down to 120 degrees or that releases its pressure, so we can check on it. And both of those are probably going to take a minute. So we'll come back over here see how the almond milk is doing. So it's at three cups and I'm hoping to get about four cups out of this so you can see like two-thirds or three-fourths. <laughs> three-fourths of the work is already done. So I'm just going to gather this up, squeeze out that last little bit. Let's see where we are. Still steaming quite a bit so I think we're probably Got a ways to go. Yeah, 150. And you want to stir this to get an accurate reading because near the edges it'll be cooler, but in the center there still might be a hot pocket. So about 150. Give that a couple more minutes. Check on the plantains. Oh yeah, they look good. If you can see, the skin split open, they smell really good. If you've never had plantains, they're so good. They're so easy to do. You can just bake them in the oven. You can do them this way. You can also do them on the grill. That's what we did with the other ones that we bought the same time we bought these. Oh, they're really soft too. Knife juice goes right in. Um, so what my husband did is he cooked our lunch on the grill, and then after we took you know, our um, chicken and things off, just put them on, just throw them on whole, while the um, grill is still hot and cooling down. And then by the time you're done eating, your plantains are done and you can have them for sort of a dessert. They're really, really good. And you can get these at pretty much any grocery store these days. They even sell them at Aldi. And Aldi has them for a good price, like four for a dollar, sometimes five for a dollar, um, quite regularly, I think. So I don't know, check your Aldi. Maybe different Aldis have different things, um, but they're pretty popular in my area. So that's why they carry them there. That's what they look like. You can get plantains green, or yellow, they're the same thing, they're just ripened. And then if you're gonna do them this way, you want to get the yellow ones and you wanna get them ripe in like black spot, spots like you saw. Same like with a banana, when they're ripe, they get kind of black spots or brown spots on them. I'm just gonna let that cool, so I'm not, and not in any hurry to mess with that, but I'll leave it open so it can start to cool off. I am gonna use the stove a little later, so I'll need to get that out of the way. But we are chugging along. I got my almond milk done, got those plantains done. This yogurt done, well, close to done. We're at 1.30. I have um, the whey that I strained from my last batch here. 
My original culture I got from plain um, unflavored yogurt. I just put a couple of spoonfuls of that in. But now I keep the whey and the reason I do that is because the whey stays in my refrigerator without spoiling longer. So if I go a week or two without making yogurt, the whey will stay. Whereas if I kept yogurt in my fridge, it would either get eaten by accident or it would um, spoil. So. All right, 118, perfect. I'm gonna strain this water away. And dump in the whey. Give it a stir. And then pour it into mason jars. And you want to let these inoculate, I do like 12 hours. Um, and how I did it previously and I've shown before is I will fill a cooler with hot water. That's about 120 degrees. That's the temperature you want to kind of hold these at while they inoculate, um, while they ferment. And then you just put them in there and close the cooler lid. That's a great way of doing it. I do like doing it that way. But I think I got a comment here on YouTube saying if my oven have, has a proof function, which it does, that that is a good way to do it. And that way I don't have to worry about my kids getting into a cooler full of water and making a mess. So I'm just going to stick them in my oven. I just hit the proof button and I'll close it up and I'll check on them tomorrow. And I have a few more things that I want to do that I'll probably do tomorrow and then I'll put this all together in one video. Right, so now I'm going to empty my, this is my um, almond pulp. Tons of things you can do with it, but I make almond milk pretty much every week, and I just can't do something with it every week. So um, I have put them in other baked goods just to kind of use it up, things like muffins and stuff. And I've not yet found something that I love so much that I'm willing to do it every week. So most weeks it just goes in the compost, but that's fine. are out. They look perfect. Six minutes. Let's see. I can get this peel off. Okay, I'm preheating my waffle iron. I think the last thing I'm going to do tonight is make some waffles. I actually tried a recipe. Um, I'm going to tweak it a tiny bit. I will post the original recipe down, down below. I almost said downstairs. Uh, but these are oatmeal waffles. So I'm going to let this preheat on sort of a medium low. And then I'm going to mix up the batter over here in the blender. Like I said, I have my blender here with there's almond milk residue, but that's fine. I'm going to put all of the ingredients in here and blend it up. So the changes I made to this recipe are I replaced the milk and the butter. I used almond milk and coconut oil to make it dairy free. I also added an extra tablespoon of sugar. The way the recipe is written, they're not very sweet, which is great if you're going to cover them with syrup or jelly or something like that. These most likely will just be um, served as is. That's kind of why I wanted to make these, so I'd have something quick I could just hand to my 18 month old and he can chomp on in the morning um, without making a huge mess every single morning. So I did feel okay about adding just a little bit more sugar to give them a little bit more flavor. I also increased the cinnamon to a full teaspoon and also a splash of vanilla. And um, I did add a little bit more almond milk. The first batch I made, I needed to thin them a little bit just to get it to flow into all of the pockets of the um, waffle iron. But other than that, I really like this like oat-based waffle. I think it makes a really good hearty waffle. It's got a different texture. Their, their recipe didn't have great reviews, but it's a different texture. If you come at it knowing that it's an oat waffle, it's a lot better. If you come in thinking it's going to be like a really light, crispy, airy waffle, it's not that. But it is really delicious. So anyway, the recipe link will be down below, and I encourage you to try them. They're really, really great. All 
Alright, so those are just cooling off. I took a minute and washed all the dishes. So I have a relatively clean kitchen for tomorrow. I want to get back into it tomorrow, do the last few things. That recipe didn't make quite as many waffles as it did just earlier today, which is weird. Um, I got an extra full waffle, which would be four sections. So I also, I think I want to do um, some sourdough waffles tomorrow, since I got the waffler out. So I'm going to feed my sourdough starter. I probably, since I'm going to um, have plenty of sourdough starter, I'll probably make my soft tortillas sourdough as well. So the last thing I'm going to do tonight is feed my sourdough starter, and then I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Getting a little bit of a later start than I was hoping. Um, this morning I took the yogurt out of the oven and I put it in the refrigerator. It looks a little runny, so we'll see if it stiffens up a little bit. It smelled done, but it was pretty runny. So I don't know if I'll be able to separate the whey for next time. I'm pulling out a little bit of sourdough starter for next time. And then with this here, I want to make, I was going to make Belgian waffles. I don't know if I want to do that still. I, I made those other waffles and I thought that my son would eat like two sections. I fed him this morning. He barely could finish one. <laughs> they're pretty hearty since they're oatmeal. So I think we'll just use what we have. I might make some other waffles later on in the week. So I will use this to make um, my sourdough tortillas and right. so I have a recipe showing how to do this already. I think I made them whole wheat but I'm going to make these ones with all purpose flour and all my measuring spoons are dirty so I'm just going to eyeball it but I'm going to add a little bit of salt. About two teaspoons of oil. And then I'm going to add about a cup of flour or however much to make a stiff dough. This is a little more starter than I usually start with, so I might have to use a little bit more. Let that rest for a few hours and then we'll roll them out. Okay, up next we're gonna make chocolate granola. I'll link the recipe down below. It's from Food Wishes. For some reason, Aldi and Lidl only sell light brown sugar, and I like dark brown sugar, so I'm just gonna add a touch of molasses. Maple syrup and coconut oil. Some vanilla, salt, and cocoa powder. Tortilla dough has puffed up and rested. I'm gonna go ahead and make them. So I'm just gonna portion them out. Ooh, it's a little sticky. Portion out the dough.
going to do it for this food prep. I didn't quite get to every single thing I wanted to get done, but I still got a lot accomplished, and hopefully this motivates you to get in the kitchen and cook something from scratch. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye!